Welcome, my name is Dylan DeLuca and thanks for being here. In today's video, I'll be bringing you along my journey in learning how to one wheel. I'm hoping to share my experience, so if you were on the fence about getting a one wheel, hopefully this video will help you decide one way or the other. I'll be going over my gear setup, why I chose the one wheel GT as my first board, and hopefully I'll be able to share some unique perspectives in learning how to ride since in this video we'll be learning together. So a little background on me. I've been snowboarding my whole life and I have a decent amount of experience skateboarding and longboarding. I rode my friend's one wheel pint uh, for the first time a couple months ago and I kind of fell in love with it. Um, here's a little video of me riding for the first time. Once I got off the board, I was kind of hooked. I ordered my one wheel GT within about a week and decided to start a YouTube channel. And here we are. So as of now, Future Motion, the manufacturer of one wheel, makes three boards. The Pint, the Pint X, and the GT. In that order, you go from the least amount of range and uh, smallest form factor to most amount of range and largest form factor, which is in the GT. The reason I got the GT is because I don't live in a downtown metro area where I can get from play, point A to point B uh, in like two to three miles. I'm looking at at least two to three miles to get to where I want to ride. And then once I start riding, we could be going for 10 plus miles at a time. I also just really didn't want to outgrow the Pint or the Pint X too quickly. Um, I was worried that I would want more range and more torque and more power. And being 190 pounds, um, I think the GT is going to be the best choice for me. So when I placed my order for the one wheel GT, I ordered the Fender bundle, uh, which basically comes with a fender uh, to cover up the wheel. And I did order on the side a plug for the charging port and rail guards. I figured these two things, actually these three things were super important because I wanted to protect my investment. Um, these things are not cheap and uh, you know, putting some, some added protection on them is definitely a good idea. I did not get the hypercharger, which I may regret, but at least while I'm learning, I don't know how long I'll be able to ride for. And if I end up wanting the hypercharger in the future, then I'll order it. So accessories that were not from Future Motion. Um, I did order float plates from a company called The Float Life. Um, if you are into one wheeling, you absolutely know who this company is. But if you've never ordered anything from their website, I will recommend 10 out of 10 quality. Everything I've received has just been excellent. They also include all instructions, hardware, tools, everything you need for the install. Um, these float plates are pretty cool because they just go over the existing bumpers of the, the one wheel GT. So you're not removing any bumpers or anything like that. Um, they are a lot more durable than the stock plastic on the bumpers and um, they will actually be self lubricating too. So if you are trying to learn curb nudges um, or you know, curb grinds, whatever else, um, they will slide a lot better without having to wax those, um, those cement curbs. And um, hopefully it'll make the learning process a little bit easier um, as I'm learning how to ride. So the next accessory outside of Future Motion's offerings is rim guards. So one thing with the One Wheel GT is the diameter of the rim is a little bit larger than previous models like the XR. What this means is the sidewalls of your tire are going to be a little bit thinner. Um, so anytime you're going over a rock or anything else, um, your rim is more likely to be impacted uh, by that rock. Uh, these rim guards basically just go around the rim and protect it. Um, I also got uh, bearing protectors just to uh, you know, keep gunk and dirt and grime and water and everything out of those. Um, these are super easy to install. Um, here's a little video of me installing them. Um, you don't have to remove anything on the board. They basically have a slit in them and wrap around uh, the rims on the inside and outside diameter of the rims. 
So I got these from a guy named Austin Hartley. He has a YouTube channel. Um, he is super into one wheeling, but um, his channel is primarily uh, has to do with 3D printing. So um, I believe he 3D prints these. I'm super impressed with the quality. I'll put a link to his Etsy profile uh, down below. But I will have to say 10 out of 10 quality and um, install super easy. He does include everything you need, including silicone, epoxy, and instructions on how to do it. So Austin, two thumbs up, 10 out of 10. Thank you, sir. So Austin also 3D prints an AirTag holder. So what this does is um, you take your Apple AirTag and throw it in this case. Uh, throw the cap on it and peel off the um, the pre-installed double-sided sticky tape that he puts on there for you and you can stick it on your board. Now air tags are not foolproof but um, you know they're only about $25, $30 and so uh, it's something probably worthwhile putting on your board just in case it gets stolen or lost. So protective gear. We've got our helmet, we've got our elbow pads, we've got our knee pads. Um, if you like any of the stuff that I got, I'll put links below. Um, not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this because they do their job. So I am super excited to get out there and go riding. Um, I'll bring you guys along. But this board is never gonna look as pretty as it does right now. So let's take a minute to appreciate that. up got the GT behind me just figured uh, this park was as good as any place to uh, try it out um, so let's see what happens Okay, I can get used to that. It's definitely hard staying still, so I might lean forward into it a little bit and see if uh, see if that's any easier. We'll see. Okay, turning around <laughs> is a no-go for now. We'll see what happens. Okay, so you watch all these videos on YouTube about people doing the splits because they kept their feet on too long and uh, tried to get off one foot at a time. So I've been trying to jump off straight. Seems to be working so far. Um, we'll see if, uh, if I can get down the, the heel lift. So the sensors, there's two sensors, front and heel on your front foot. And uh, once you're going less than one mile per hour, you have to have both of them in contact. So what they say is if you lift your heel up, it deactivates the heel sensor and, uh, and the board should shut down. So let's see if we can get that. Ah, okay. 
so I do not have simple stop on, um, which is a different way. Saw a couple guys trying to learn with it on and it seemed like it was counterproductive because when you're learning, you're going back and forth and uh, simple stop when you go backwards, it, uh, it uh, kills, kills the board so it stops it for you. And it seemed like when you're learning, it might be best just to, to keep that off. But um, I'm gonna ride around some more and see, see how it goes. All right, guys, it is day three of one wheeling. I'm sorry, the audio quality is gonna be terrible because I don't have any mics, but I figured this is the best time, if any, to, uh, to give you guys a little update. So I'm about five miles into a ride. I'm really starting to get the hang of this thing. Uh, I tried to do some like reverts and uh, little tricks earlier. I'll have to share that video with you guys. Um, they didn't go so well, but I have definitely gotten better at riding and riding straight, stopping, turning, all of those things. But man, there is nothing that I would rather be doing right now than this. This is so, so much fun. Um, so get out there, guys. Do something you like and try not to fall. <laughs> This thing has been a blast. A um, couple of biggest takeaways uh, for owning a one wheel in general, maybe maybe all one wheels, I'm sure, is that just the accessibility to ride. Um, I'm into a lot of other sports, you know, kayaking, snowboarding, motorcycles, stand-up jet skis. All of those things just require you know so much effort and so much planning to go out and do with friends or even by yourself. Uh, but this thing is just so much fun without very much work. Um, I mean, even if I'm riding to some trails that I like that are two or three miles away, I mean, I leave my doorstep and I'm instantly having fun during those miles. So I put about a hundred miles on this thing so far and um, it just makes everything a little bit more fun. I mean, I ride it to go get my mail. I ride it to take out the trash, anything I'm doing is just a little bit more fun uh, on your one wheel. Um, I've done a lot of on-road, a lot of off-road. I think my favorite thing to do is uh, like single track bike trails. Um, that's just kind of where this thing excels and I've been really impressed with it. 
So I wanted to go over a couple of things that I'm just super impressed with, with uh, Future Motion One Wheel. Um, first thing is quality. I mean, everything that you touch on this thing feels high end. I mean, even the power button and the response that you get from clicking it feels premium. Um, I am definitely starting to realize why this thing does cost $2,200. Um, it really excels through uh, a lot of things that I didn't think it would. Um, even some of the deeper sand that, uh, that are on these uh, single track bike paths that I've been doing, it does pretty well, better than I expected. Um, you know, if you get into the super deep, you know, beach sand, it is what it is. You're only on one wheel um, and the nose can dive, but uh, moderately deep sand, it pushes through. Um, up hills, I, you know, saw a lot of reviews saying that, you know, one wheels can't go uphill. Um, you know, if you are trying to push this thing up a steep, steep hill, obviously it's not going to climb because the nose kind of catches, but, um, Anything that I would ride a bicycle up comfortably, I've been able to do on this. So another thing this excels at is um, carvability. I mean, one of my favorite things to do has become uh, on bike tracks, uh, just carving between the yellow lines. Um, once you get carving down, I mean, that is just so much fun. It's such a cool feeling. Um, it does feel a little bit squirrely at first, and that's probably just a newbie thing that you have to get used to. Um, and I have been able to calm that down quite a bit and get used to uh, going, rolling from the toe to the heel. Um, and that probably has a lot to do with the tire too. Um, on the note of the tire, um, it has a lot of, uh, it's getting a lot of slack online, but um, I actually really like it. I mean, it is a little bit firm, um, but I understand why. I mean, they are trying to get the most mileage out of this thing. And when you have a harder diameter uh, rubber, you're gonna get more miles out of the tire. Um, the sidewalls are a little bit stiff, but you know, I understand that too, because they're trying to protect that rim. Um, so overall, I think they did a great job on the shape of the tire, which in my mind is, um, you know, one of the more important things. I mean, it is flat on top, um, and then it kind of uh, curls around or curves around to the sides. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. I mean, you have something that's stable when you're going straight, uh, but something that's very nimble. So another thing that I've been super impressed with is the range. Um, I have gone about 16 miles on a single charge. It was a mix between, um, you know, dirt, asphalt, mostly trails. And um, I think I only used about 70% battery during that trip. Um, but it is just super, super cool to see a company actually back or um, not fluff their numbers with, uh, with what you're gonna get out of the board. Um, I have ridden it about 15 miles and that only used about 50% of my range. So I fully believe that if you're at full charge and you're just on road with good PSI in your tire, um, that you can get that 30 miles that they're uh, predicting. And then if you're doing a combo of on-road, off-road, um, or just uh, off-road, you know, in the deeper sand and stuff, um, you know, that's gonna reduce your, your mileage to probably about the 20 that they're predicting. So kudos to Future Motion for not fluffing the numbers. I mean, I can't think of anything else that I've ever bought, even a car that gets the mileage that the manufacturer predicts. So on to things that I am not very impressed with. Um, when I first opened up my board, I turned it on I put my fingers on both of the foot pads to make sure that the sensors were working. I lifted up the board and tilted it forward to make sure the wheel engaged. Um, it did make a really weird noise. It sounded like the tire was rubbing on either the front or the back of one of the foot pads. Um, the weird thing is it didn't make that noise when I was riding it, um, but it unfortunately made a different noise. <laughs> Um, I was actually hearing a clicking from the hub. Um, I did reach out to Future Motion about these. Um, this was on a Friday. During that weekend, you know, Saturday, Sunday, um, I was riding the board and the noises actually went away. And so by the time they got back to me Monday, um, I basically told them that I was just going to keep the board because since it wasn't making those noises anymore, I knew they couldn't reproduce them. And um, so I, 
I opted to keep the board. If that was a bad idea, uh, list that in the comments. But um, you know, it seems to be working really well now. I don't know if that was just a break-in thing or what. Um, you will notice that I took off my uh, guards for the rim and the bearing, as well as the float plates that I got from the float light because I was gonna send it back um, and they don't want any aftermarket parts uh, on the board when you send it back. So next, uh, this thing is heavy. Um, I think I mentioned earlier in the video that I had only ridden a pint before this and it is bigger than the pint. Um, it's not overly bulky by any means. I mean, you can still tote this thing around and throw it in the back seat of your car or whatever else, but it is, um, it is a big piece of equipment. I mean, it, it was something that I didn't realize because I had never seen one in person. Um, that, uh, that it's size. I mean, seeing it on camera is one thing, but seeing it in person is another. Um, another thing is it is pretty heavy. I mean, we're talking, I believe about 10 pounds heavier than the XR. Um, I understand why it has to be this heavy. I mean, we're talking about bigger batteries, um, more durable uh, materials, but um, you know, just something to know. So next on this list is the board seems to turn off uh, when it falls over. I mean, I'm talking about uh, just simply tipping over. Um, it doesn't happen every time, of, but maybe about 10% of the time it shuts off. I don't know if there's a safety feature or not, and it has turned back on every time that it, it's happened, but just something to note there. Let me know in the comments if this happens to your guys'. I don't know if it's something that's supposed to happen, like a safety, uh, precaution or whatever, but um, I don't know. Okay, so on to recommendations uh, for getting your one wheel. Um, one of the biggest things with the concave foot pads, because um, I do love the concave of these, um, but they do get a little bit harsh on the sides if you're not wearing the right shoes. I actually found after riding some skate shoes, actually some boots even, um, I found that these Crocs, yes, they are Crocs, it's the Croc uh, Pacer, uh, ended up being my favorite shoe to ride with. It has really comfy soles, um, and uh, so it kind of eliminates the, the harsh feeling in your toe and heel while you're carving, but also they're plastic, so you can just clean them off really easily. Um, obviously the fender helps with keeping a lot of the dirt and dust off your shoes, but um, you still get dirty, um, and so it's nice to have something that you can easily clean. So next on the list is tire pressure. So mine shift with 20 PSI, plus or minus, um, and I actually rode it at 20 PSI for about the first 75 miles. I wanted to see what, um, how the board rode at the manufacturer's kind of recommended PSI. Um, and I did notice that the board uh, significantly, significantly improved um, how it rode after about 50 miles. And I think that was the, the tire breaking in a little bit. But in this recommendations category, I would definitely recommend just lowering your PSI right away. That's gonna allow the tire to break in a little bit faster and you are just gonna um, enjoy breaking the tire in a little bit more rather than leaving it really, uh, really stiff. Um, I found, you know, 17, 18 PSI, I weigh about 190 pounds, was my sweet spot. So lower your tire pressure right away. When it comes to learning how to ride, um, there's a lot to cover here, but I'll try to make it brief. Uh, first thing is gear up. You will fall. I have had about four notable falls. Nothing, you know, where I couldn't ride home afterwards, um, but definitely gear up is, is the first thing. Um, toe to heel balance is the hardest part by far. So when you are learning, it does help to ride along a fence line or even have a friend hold your hands um, to help you find that toe to heel balance. Turn off simple stop. So simple stop is a safety feature in case you're not familiar with it. Um, that when you're balancing on the board flat and you move backwards, it drops and the motor turns off. When you're learning, you're gonna be doing a lot of uh, back and forth motions. Um, so it's not ideal or practical while you're learning to have that feature on. Um, the next best thing is to jump off with both feet. I've seen too many people on the internet fall uh, by taking their back foot off first and then the board starts cruising away from you and you do the splits. So um, definitely practice that uh, double foot dismount. And once you get the, the hang of things, you can uh, raise your heel to deactivate that sensor and the board will stop. Um, 
you know, I think the two foot dismount is probably the safest thing while you're learning just to hop off the board. Um, but one thing is do not worry about beating the board up. Um, I know everyone wants a, a clean board that's not beat up, but um, safety first. And so, you know, put your body, body's well-being in front of the board's well-being. Um, if you need to get off the board and it needs to fall or do whatever it needs to do, don't worry about the board, get out of the way. I'm coming to realize why uh, getting a used one wheel, um, why they are all so beat up. None of them look new out of the box when they've been used. And that's just part of the thing. Um, it is a utility, it is a tool to have fun. Um, so use it as such, you know, try not to baby this thing. So while you're learning to ride, one of the biggest things um, that I found is, and one of the most important things, is learning how to adjust your feet while riding. When you do hit bumps, um, it does sometimes displace your feet into an unsafe position. Um, and so learning how to readjust your feet while you're riding back into a safe riding position is super important. So I ended up uh, standing in a uh, stable spot, holding onto a fence and just playing around with adjusting my feet. Um, that kind of leads into uh, riding position and stance. So um, I prefer riding, so I'm left foot forward. My front foot is uh, towards the very top of the foot pad here, angled a little bit forward. My back foot is as wide as it can go um, and pretty much facing straight. It's gonna be different for everyone. So um, figure out what your, what your comfort spot is and learn how to adjust your feet on the fly. Bend your knees. Um, you know, it's easy to get an upright stance uh, while you're riding. And um, although that uh, helps out with leg fatigue a lot, um, you need to bend your knees while you're riding. I mean, this thing is all about balance. I mean, balancing toe to heel, front to back, um, it is all about balance and bending your knees is going to be your best balanced stance. So practice every time you ride. I don't care if you're just taking this out to the mailbox. Um, Find some pebbles to carve between, find some, uh, some curbs to go up. Um, just practice every time you ride. The faster that you get comfortable on this, the more fun you're gonna have, and um, it's just gonna accelerate uh, how quickly you learn. Um, this thing's all about creativity. I mean, going from point A to point B, you can get creative with how you do that. You can make it as easy as you want by going straight, or you can make it as hard as you want by uh, finding obstacles to, to carve between. But the more creative that you get with riding your one wheel, uh, the faster you're gonna get comfortable on it. So finishing thoughts. Um, I've been super, super happy with this thing. I have a blast with it. I pretty much ride it uh, every day that I get home from work. And sometimes I even bring it in my work vehicle and ride it, uh, ride it during lunchtime. Um, I am really glad that I got the GT over the Pint or Pint X because um, I found that my like normal cruising speed is between 16 and 19 miles per hour. Um, it, uh, which is, you know, this is the only board that can ride that uh, speed comfortably. So if you liked this video, please like and subscribe. This is a brand new YouTube channel, so it could use all the help we could get. Um, I'll be using it mostly for one wheeling and one wheel videos. Some more videos to come, by the way, of some trail rides I've been doing. Uh, but also some, uh, some other stuff too, so stay tuned and I appreciate you watching. Okay, so... First one's fine.